I keep coming back to Griffith Park over and over again on this channel. Something about the large 4,210 acre park keeps drawing my attention. I don't know why that is. Maybe I'm drawn to the park because of its lush green scenery. Although, more likely, it's probably because it's a paranormal enthusiast's dream come true. The park is also reportedly cursed, has tens of ghost stories to its name, allegedly hides a humanoid creature with a bent back, long neck, and cold black eyes. But no other haunting tale is as infamous as that of the haunted picnic table that is nestled within the depths of Griffith Park, known to many as Picnic Table Number 29. Like I mentioned earlier, we've discussed Griffith Park before on this channel. Although, truthfully, we really only touched upon Picnic Table number 29. But if you'd like to hear more about the bizarre happenings of Griffith Park, I recommend watching that video. Link in the description below. Back in the mid-70s, tragedy struck at Picnic Table number 29 on October 31st. 1976. Late that Halloween night, after a long night of partying, 22-year-old musician Rand Garrett and his girlfriend, 20-year-old aspiring actress Nancy Jensen, went out for a walk inside of Griffith Park. It was a quiet night, and the two enjoyed the greenery of the urban park. However, after some time, the two decided to take a break and rested at the nearest picnic table they laid on their backs and gazed upon the stars, and they both wished to die in each other's arms. It was then they decided to make love under the cover of night. As they were in the middle of the act, inconceivably, a nearby tree fell over and crushed them both. The two corpses were left like that for an entire night, only to be discovered by an early jogger on his daily routine. Police were quickly called to the scene and removed the bodies. Their remains were cremated and scattered alongside the picnic table. Furthermore, to remember the tragedy that struck at that table Halloween night, someone scribbled on the table, rest in peace, October 31st, 1976, Rand plus Nancy. Despite their tragic demise, that's not where the urban legend ends. Only days after the incident, strange events began to occur. After the tree had fallen and police removed the corpses of its unfortunate victims, the city hired a tree trimmer, Morris Carl, who was authorized to remove the fallen tree in fear of it potentially harming someone else. He was instructed to saw off the tree and clear it off the table. When he got there, he revved his saw's engine, and that's when he felt something strange. He reported, I felt funny. What happened was, I'd sawed off the crown of the tree, when, from out of nowhere, I got hit with these real strong chills. So hard, it was as if I was coming down with the fastest flu ever. I try to shake it off and get back to work, but each time I'd fire up the saw and get near the tree, I'd get real cold and hear this weird moaning and crying. So I'd stop the saw and listen, and it would go away. But then I'd start her up again, and it would come back. Finally, I was freezing so bad I had to go to the truck and get my coat. That's when the tree started to shake violently. The tree just went crazy, not just lightly shaking, but bouncing up and down as if someone were picking it up and dropping it. I was shocked, so I backed away. And then the tree just stopped shaking. And that's when I heard it. I heard the voice of a girl and a guy chanting. It told me, leave 
us alone. Next thing I knew, I was trying to escape in my car, but the engine wouldn't start. Next thing is the rubbing sound along the windshield and letters being written across the fogged up glass. First there was an N, and an E, and the first word is next. Then there's a T, and an I, and this ends up being time. Then a Y, and an O, and a U. The last word was die. Next time, you die. Once his engine started back up, Kara quickly fled the scene. And when he was out of the park, he called his boss, his supervisor, Dennis Higgs. Carl's supervisor was frustrated at first, but then let out a chuckle at Carl's story. Higgs called Carl out for running away, telling him that what he heard were nothing more but delusions of an aging mind. After much discourse between the two, they agreed on a $500 bet to cut the tree after dark. If Higgs was able to cut the tree down, then he would take $500 from Carl's paycheck. Conversely, if Higgs wasn't able to cut down the tree, then Carl would receive a $500 bonus. Come nightfall, Higgs made his way to the picnic table, and the last thing he said to anyone was sucker's bet. The next day, Higgs was found flat on his back, not moving, with a seemingly horrified frozen expression. Astonishingly, his chainsaw was bent in a U-shape. What's even more eerie was that despite the severe lash marks all over Higgs' body, the coroner had determined his death was ultimately caused by a heart attack. A bit more disturbing was that Higgs' hands were injured and some of his fingernails were even broken. This led investigators to assume that Higgs had a physical altercation, a struggle with someone else, and he was dragged 15 feet toward the picnic table. The only problem with this assumption, this deduction, was that there was no evidence of anyone else being there. To this day, this legend is still well known to the locals of Griffith Park, and many even avoid the bench entirely, afraid that they may accidentally disturb the spirits of the couple that died that Halloween night so long ago. Many who work at the park are also told this story, and they too warn visitors not to disturb the picnic table. With all that in mind, there's only one question that lingers in my mind. Is the legend real or fake? Well, honestly, in my opinion, the legend is probably nothing more than a legend. As far as I can tell, there is no documentation of a couple actually dying at the picnic table, nor is there any documentation of Higgs' death. That said, there are still dozens of other legends that find their home in the park. Who's to say one of those legends isn't real?